Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, yes, I'm uh, from Six Nations, and I live on the West Coast. I've been on the West Coast for 23 years, and it's good to be home. Wonderful. And um, I'm happy to see such a great turnout for uh, this afternoon's event. Uh, congratulations, OCAD and uh, OK Team OCAD for such a wonderful exhibition. And um, actually, uh, the Two Row Media, which I'm part of, we have an exhibition inside as well. It's the media installation called For This Land. Do take some time to check it out. We'd appreciate it. Um, in 1967, there was a fellow, Chief Dan George, hands up if you know who I'm talking about. <clears throat> chief Dan George was act an actual chief from the Tsleil Tooth Nation. In 1967, you know, he's a a uh, well-known um, uh, actor, uh, cultural leader, and also a really great poet himself. And uh, during Canada's 100th anniversary, uh, he was asked to write a piece for that occasion, and uh, that piece I'm going to read for you now with the permission of his son, Leonard George, and it was called, uh, it's called uh, Lament for Confederation. This is from uh, Chief Dan George. <clears throat> How long have I known you, O Canada? A hundred years? Yes, a hundred years and many, many Selena more. And today when you celebrate your hundred years, O Canada, I am sad for the Indian people throughout the land. For I have known you when your forests were mine, when they gave me my meat and my clothing. I have known you in your streams and rivers where your fish flashed and danced in the sun, where the waters said, come, come and eat of my abundance and I have known you in the freedom of the winds, and my spirit, like the winds, once roamed your good lands. But in the long hundred years since the white man came, I have seen my freedom disappear like the salmon going mysteriously out to sea. The white man's strange customs, which I could not understand, pressed down upon me until I could no longer breathe. When I fought to protect my land and my home, I was called savage. When I neither understood nor welcomed his way of life, I was called lazy. And when I tried to rule my people, I was stripped of my authority. My nation was ignored in your history textbooks. They were little more important in the history of Canada than the buffalo that ranged the plains. I was ridiculed in your plays and motion pictures. And when I drank your fire water, I got drunk, very, very drunk, and I forgot. Oh, Canada, how can I celebrate with you this centenary, this hundred years? Shall I thank you for the reserves that are left to me of my beautiful forests, for the canned fish of my rivers, for the loss of my pride and authority, even among my own people, for the lack of my will to fight back? No, I must forget what's past and gone. Oh, God in heaven, Give me back the courage of the olden chiefs. Let me wrestle with my surroundings. Let me again as in the old days dominate my environment. Let me humbly accept this new culture and through it rise up and go on. Oh God, like the thunderbird of old, I shall rise again out of the sea. I shall grab the instruments of the white man's successes, his education, his skills, and with these new tools, I shall build my race into the proudest segment of your society. Before I follow the great chiefs who have gone before us, O Canada, I shall see these things come to pass. I shall see our young braves and our chiefs sitting in the houses of law and government, ruling and being ruled by the knowledge and freedoms of our great lands. So shall we shatter the barriers of isolation. So shall the next hundred years be the greatest in the proud history of our tribes and our nations. Thank you, Chief Dan George. <laughs> And here is my response and my reply to 150 years. It's called Lament for Confederate Earth. This is called Confederation 150. Ah, oh, Canada, standing defiantly behind a line that doesn't quite protect or define as it was wished and won by war. These spoils are yours. So what can you claim on flimsy parchment that proclaims ownership, citizenship, a severely superficialness, the taking and overtaking, the dismissing and denying, buried under layers. The ice is petrifying, making hard rock shields labeled Canadian, a nationalistic resource where nothing cultivates and nothing to trade. 
Did you think the steel staples would hold it together? Did you remember to ask permissions or make paper consultations using the Queen's English? Oh, Canada, do not slip me the tongue and call it a French kiss. How do two languages survive, 65 or more, an agenda of insults with your ideas of colonial distinctions? Pretty little tricks and lyrics sung from the immigrants' hearts. And your crests in cloth tells all as two red nations stand divided either side a dying maple leaf, a thinly penciled treaty and centered symbol, oh most stable, until autumn's justice sucks the truth from it and we begin again. Ah, uh, Canada. Offering songs to join in false chorus, another choice to remain forgetful, but your soldiers stay true and their patriot hearts continue to glow with pride. While we, the original, write our own journals after disrupted chapters, leaving my people to fight, flee, or die. The strength of our identity was born before you were even formed and doesn't include hops and hockey. Who are you exactly? Listening to the Mother Corp with terrestrial signals, rewriting stories and mining hours, your race hate filled comments take this country's temperature and count its votes, so listen close. There is no home if there is no native land. Sing about it all you want, the hominies will always be off key to me. And the chief, reciting his lament 50 years previous, said it all from the West. Ah, Canada, how many of me had to die so you can be you? Reconciliation is not something you read about. It's something you do. Thank you.